get started. Shut cell phones off. Uh, first of all, I'd like to welcome everybody to the local emergency planning committee meeting for September 24, 2019. Uh, I'd like to remind everybody that um, they should turn cell phones off. Um, this is subject to the open meeting law. The public is invited. However, this is not a public hearing. Um, and to note to everyone, this is um, going live to the Weymouth residents through WETC. It's also being recorded for future broadcast. Um, with that, um, I'd like to have the committee introduce themselves. The Weymouth Local Emergency Planning Committee. We'll start at the end with DPW. Don Farron, DPW Crew Chief. John Barker, Deputy Director of Central Maintenance, Town of Weymouth. Lieutenant Jeff Wall, Training Safety Officer, Weymouth Fire Department. Fire Chief Keith Stark. Dan McCormick, the Director of the Weymouth Health Department. Lieutenant James St. Croix from the Weymouth Police Department. Steve White, Citizen Representative, LEPC. John Mulvey, Hill, Emergency Management Director, Chairman of the LEPC. Charlotte Jenkins, Deputy Director, Emergency Manager. John Tose, uh, Citizen Rep, LEPC. Brian Pomodoro, South Shore EMS and South Shore Health. Eugene Duffy, Director of EMS, South Shore Health. Mary Heinrichs, WETC. Thank you. And we have some honored guests. I'd like to introduce uh, James Mannion from MEMA. Uh, we have two people from FIMSA, uh, the U.S. Department of Transportation's Pipeline Health, Safety, and Hazardous Materials Agency. Welcome. Um, we've got some honored guests from Braintree. Uh, we have, I know, Mayor Sullivan from Braintree and uh, Weymouth's mayor. I'm sorry, Mayor, didn't see you sneak in. Uh, mayor Hedlund from Weymouth is here. Um, is I, the mayor from Quincy I thought was coming. I don't see him. Um, and we have a contingent from Braintree, a group from Quincy, and some people from Hingham were invited. Uh, Calpine um, a Power Plant from Quincy has also joined us today. So we'd like to welcome everybody. Uh, this is an actual LEPC meeting, and there are a couple of agenda items. Uh, item number one. Approval of the minutes from the June 20th meeting. Everybody should have them in their packet. I'll entertain any motions. Motion to accept. Second. Motion to accept, motion to second. Uh, any discussion? Those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Okay, we can enter those into the record with the clerk. Um, next item, uh, discussion of hazardous materials incidents since we met last. Um, Dan, do you have any? Matt, I'm not aware of any incidents that have occurred since our last meeting. Jeff, you aware of any? Negative. Other than do we, what, the, we had the evacuation at the Ralph Talbot. Yeah, there was a natural gas leak that was confined to an area. The school was evacuated as a precaution only, and the students were let back into the building. How'd that go with the schools, John? Right? It went well. It was very well coordinated. Yeah. All the departments took part, part of that. textbook. Excuse me. I said, from what I went, from what I heard, it was textbook right by the. It was. It went correctly. The buses came. They were evacuated. The message went out to parents to pick them up at the other school. That was to the Nash, right? They went to the Nash school, yes. They went there for the day. They didn't, okay. they didn't return until uh, dismissal. So. Anything else on that? Any other incidents that anyone knows of since we, since we met last? Okay. Um, next item is a continued discussion on the public safety concerns with the Undersecretary's office and FIMSA regarding the proposed compressor station. Dan, you want to let us off? Oh, Mayor Hedlund, you want to do an opening remark on that? We'll come up together if you that's can. more efficient for you. Yes, sir. I have my guest after you. He'll go. He'll hold. He'll host you. Thank you all for coming and welcome to Weymouth and uh, reconvening this in the same location after I don't know how many months it's been, but it's been a while. Um, as you're aware, Algonquin, Algonquin, 
Quinn Gas Transmission LLC plans to construct a new compressor station here in the town of Weymouth and North Weymouth as part of the Atlantic Bridge project. The town believes that siting a natural gas compressor station at this location puts its residents, first responders, and the general public at risk. Not only would a disaster at the compressor station cause physical damage to the sur surrounding environment and people, but it could also severely damage regional infrastructure, regional transportation, and cause potential catastrophic conditions within the South Shore of Massachusetts. If built, the compressor station would be directly adjacent to a public place of assembly, the King's Cove parcel, a regional sewage pump station that handles sewage from the town of Braintree, Holbrook, Randolph, and Weymouth. That's the MWRA's intermediate pump station. The Four River Bridge, which is a newly constructed $244 million bridge that carries 39,000 passengers a day. And lastly, it's adjacent to the ocean, which is, in this case is very significant because it is a major shipping lane and one of the busiest ports in the region, as well as creates a hazard to the location due to hurricane storm surge. To make the situation even more concerning, gas pipelines and compressor stations have been known to be explosive and fatal. Recent explosions in Massachusetts and other states have shown that high pressure natural gas and compressor stations may not be as safe as we previously thought. This leaves the town with many questions for federal and state officials. In a worst case scenario, what would happen to the MWRA intermediate pump station, which pumps 60 million gallons of raw sewage a day? Would it be destroyed, creating an environmental and public health disaster? What would happen to the four of a bridge? Would it be inoperable, affecting the commutes of 39,000 plus commuters a day and regional trade? Would the fire departments responding be properly equipped and trained to respond appropriately to such a disaster? Could the disaster become a bigger situation due to hazardous material being shipped to or housed at the Four River Energy Center and other facilities that are located by nearby a number of tank farms. Uh, we have a fatty acid plant adjacent to, we have the MWRA pelletizing plant. We have uh, two power plants in the near vicinity and so on. And last but not least, what would happen to the residents and vi visitors of Weymouth? The last time the Pipeline and Hazardous Material Safety Administration, PIMSA, was here in Weymouth on June 17, 2019 for a field hearing. At that time, they listened to the testimony of concerned citizens of Weymouth and the surrounding community. Today, I hope PIMSA can shed some light on these issues and discuss with us the results of that June field hearing. Lastly, I would like to thank everyone for taking the time out of their busy schedules to attend this meeting. Please voice your concerns and ask questions that you may have. It's our job to keep the residents safe, and if we are forced to have a compressor station in Weymouth, we must start today by preparing ourselves for all potential disaster scenarios and health impacts. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, thank you very much. I'm pleased to be with Mayor Hedlund, and I think I can speak uh, as well uh, on behalf of Mayor Koch uh, in terms of our continued commitment uh, to see that this compressor station is not built. I'm not going to go through all the specifics that Mayor Hedlund did because I think he outlined very properly some of the uh, concerns that remain uh, in terms of uh, the potential or the possibility of building a compressor station in North Weymouth. And, and though the plant may physically be in North Weymouth, um, we are all impacted by it as a region, and we are enjoined as well with Hingham uh, to our south in terms of four communities and collaboration and communication and coming up with a comprehensive plan to be, uh, in fact, in opposition, which I think is the right position to hold uh, in terms of the protection of our citizenry. Uh, and I'm hopeful, and I thank you for being uh, here and doing the job that you're doing in terms of emergency planning. Let me tell you right now, I hope that we don't have to do any emergency planning around the compressor station. Um, it should not be built, simply put. And we are disappointed uh, in the decisions made by the DEP in terms of the air quality analysis and all the information that we were able to provide as communities. And let me just take a moment and thank, as Mayor Hedlund did, all the citizens who have been so engaged and active uh, in this process. Their voice is being heard, not only by us, but by the state. And so as we continue to mobilize in opposition, and I want to recognize the East Branch Civic Association and 
uh, all the elected officials and branch in terms of the town council's uh, support and opposition. Uh, I also want to point out that we share the concern with Branchy Emergency Management Association, headed by Bob James, our fire department, our police department. Everyone has looked at this proposal and, quite frankly, it doesn't make any sense. It really doesn't. And it's not a NIMBY attitude, it's the right attitude. So uh, we're going to remain focused on this. Mary Beth McGrath, who heads up our health and building division, is here. Uh, she's been a consistent a reviewer of the proposal. We've been joined, um, I have an assistant town solicitor, John Goldrosen, who works on this proposal pretty much every day that he's in the office. Um, and our DPW, Department of Public Works, Jim Arsenault is here. Uh, again, a point person uh, on behalf of the town of Branchy. Uh, but Branchy is not alone on this, and Weymouth is not alone on this, and Quincy is not alone on this, and Hingham is not alone on this, and we as a region need to remain focused and diligent uh, in the work that uh, we need to do to make sure this project does not get built. Um, I'll just add one last point, if I could. Uh, you know, when DEP made the air quality decision, and again, that disappointed a lot of us because we didn't think it was the right decision, we understood at that point, this is a FERC project, uh, a federally endorsed project, but when the state agency of DEP made the decision to support, at least initially, uh, allowing this project to move forward, I think we understood then that we have, uh, unfortunately, uh, some more opposition to this from the state. Our legislators have been advocates. Um, we need to continue to work not only in terms of the federal proposal here, uh, which just comes under that umbrella, but also Unfortunately, we need to work against the state from a standpoint of, uh, of really trying to have a level of conversation and hopefully a recognition by the state uh, that, in fact, this should not be built. The other last point just to make is that this pipeline that, that is being proposed and the compressor station does not benefit any of us on the South Shore. We have no access to this line being built, and, in fact, the compressor station and the line being built further north will enhance communities north of us and outside of the United States. Uh, so, um, again, uh, our opposition needs to remain strong. We are committed in Braintree to staying and joined on this effort, and we'll, we shall never uh, retreat from that, uh, from that quest. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. I just want to reiterate a comment you made that Braintree, Quincy, Weymouth, and Hingham are all in this together. And this is why the Weymouth LEPC invited the other communities so we can begin to work together on a joint plan so we'll all be responding at the same, in the same manner if need be. So I appreciate you bringing that up. Thank you. We thank you for that. I do have a 10 o'clock meeting I have to go back to in Braintree, but uh, my, my, my folks will be here and we're, still, we're, we're with you every day. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any more comments, Mayor? Um, from the committee, I know some of several committee members have a few we'll comments. Dan, we'll go back to you now. Go ahead. Sure. Thank you, everyone, for coming today. Maybe, maybe. Matt Brennan has been an incredible asset to the town on this project for the last four years. is unable to be here today, um, but he has worked tires, tirelessly uh, in opposition of this project. On August 18th of 2019, he submitted a four-page letter uh, to Karen Gentile of the Pipeline and Hazardous Materials Safety Administration, specifically detailing many of the concerns that the municipality has in some of the items that will be discussed today with the different departments. Uh, in addition to that, we have put together uh, three ring binders for FIMSA today that specifically outline and summarize the concerns we have with additional backup documentation. We'd like to give that to you at the end of the meeting as well. Uh, specifically for the, the health department, uh, we obviously have many concerns there. Uh, just briefly, I'll explain a few. Uh, despite some of the reports that have been issued, we continue to have concerns that the proposed compression station could exacerbate the health impacts of the local communities. As stated in the HIA, the health impact assessment, Weymouth already has higher rates of lung cancer than the state average. Quincy has higher rates of lung, liver, pharynx cancers than the state average. Residents of Weymouth, Braintree, experience more hospitalizations for COPD than the state average. Weymouth youth, grades K through 8,
have higher rates of pediatric asthma than the state average. These are very concerning trends. If built, we feel the compressor station will impact public health negatively. Migrant dust generated during site remediation and construction, activities in contaminated soils that contain PAHs and other heavy metals will be disturbed. Soils excavated during construction and remediation will contain LNAPLs or historic oil products that will be impacting. The compressor station will also emit carcinogens such as benzene and formaldehyde if it's allowed to be built with annual limits of 42% and 69% respectively. Uh, noise is also a large concern in the North Weymouth area. The HIA found that estimated sound levels generated during construction will cause negative health impacts. In addition to that, the report states that there will be an eight decibel increase at the closest residential receptor, which is 840 feet away from the proposed compressor station. It's hard to believe. As we've commented for four years, we feel that this proposed location is already overburdened with industrial discharges from Quincy and Braintree and Weymouth itself with all the other facilities currently there. We don't believe that we should subject our residents to any more additional waste there. The proposed air and monitoring stations we feel are not adequate for the expansive operations at this particular location. Um, again, those are the general health concerns we know. There are many more in all of the reports that we've read. There are countless carcinogens and other items, NOx and VOC and carbon monoxide in the discharge of that facility that will certainly impact the residents in the general area. Uh, more specifically today, I think we're going to also speak about the emergency related concerns with fire and police and how we would adequately address the situation or an incident if it were to be built at that location. And again, I'd like to get this to you at the end of the meeting, please. Thank you. Chief. Morning. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd like to uh, thank Mayor Hedlund and his administration and leadership dealing with this issue for the past four years. Um, as a member of the LEPC, we're tasked with um, planning for worst case scenarios. So this is a, uh, another high risk that's going to be placed into our community that uh, my firefighters will have to respond to, and along with other mutual aid companies from Braintree, Hingham, and Quincy. So, thinking of the worst case scenario, I'm, I have concerns with the close proximity to the bridge, to the national grid distribution system, and the MWRA plant. I'm concerned with what would happen if we did have that catastrophe. <coughs> as a chief, I have to ensure the safety of the citizens of Weymouth as well as the safety of my firefighters. So, Responding to an incident of this nature would require more personnel, more training, more equipment, apparatus. And I, I, I'd ask uh, Enbridge if these are things that they are willing to assist the town of Weymouth in if this was to be built. Um, you know, we have, uh, we are a very highly trained department. My training officer is here, Lieutenant Wall. Um, we take ser training very serious. And uh, this is just another thing that we need to be trained upon uh, annually, because this is not something that happens every day in Weymouth. Uh, this would be new to us. So we're trying to uh, prepare my firefighters to be ready to put out a fire efficiently and safely. I ask uh, Enbridge if this would be a, uh, if they build this compressor station, would we have incident action plans, emergency incident action plans? that would assist us in how to fight a fire? Would they be willing to work with the local fire department to create an SOP and, uh, again, do the training with our department? I, I look at the uh, personal protective equipment that the firefighters would be uh, challenged with when we respond to an incident this type. You know, Dan talked about all those bad chemicals that my guys would be breathing in. So breathing apparatus, uh, bunker gear, proximity suits, all the stuff that is beyond the, the normal house fire that as Weymouth firefighters we deal with. So these are the questions that I'd like to ask Enbridge and hopefully they will work with us in the future if this is to be built. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Um, do you have any comments from the police on law enforcement, traffic concerns? Or Good morning. Thank you. Uh, obviously, worst case scenario, we're concerned about the safety and security of our community. The location of it 
uh, worst case scenario, the traffic flow of and the um, would have to impact so many different communities. We'll have to work on that with our our planning board, but. Um, the manpower issue with this, the long-term traffic detours and stuff on the bridge. So that, that'd be definitely a concern for police. And all of the injuries and casualties will end up at the hospital. So you've got the, uh, one of you can talk on the ambulance response and EMS and mutual aid and the other on the ER and the influx. Well, an EMS, we're generally in a defensive posture when it comes to this type of incident. Uh, so what we have to do is assess what the threat is and then we allocate our resources. So obviously if a project like this goes forward, we would have to completely reanalyze what our response posture is in the community. Uh, that might mean more assets, but it will definitely mean more training. Um, we have a great relationship now with Weymouth Fire and Weymouth Police. So we're doing a lot of collaborative training there. But as I said, it's defensive in nature for us. So we would have to alter our service zone plan, for example, to accommodate any type of threat like that. And then the ER. I'm going to just echo what Mr. McCormick said um, from a public health perspective. Um, and all the uh, disease uh, pathologies that he discussed would end up in our health system. Um, that's spread throughout the health system from the emergency department uh, through primary care. So there is large impacts. Thanks, Gene. Um, Karen, do you want to speak from U.S. DOT's point? No, you have to go up. <laughs> I'm, I'm Karen Gentile with the United States Department of Transportation Pipeline and Hazardous Materials Safety Administration. And our primary mission is safety. Um, we do hear the community's concerns today um, from the June 17th meeting, as well as from previous letters, correspondence, and meetings that we've had with, with the local community. And however, our primary um, focus, as I mentioned, is safety. We don't have the authority to permit or approve pipeline projects. However, um, we do continue to monitor this project, and if it is approved and it moves forward into construction, um, we will continue to perform checks to verify that the pipeline operator is operating in compliance with the federal pipeline safety regulations. We have um, federal pipeline safety regulations are in, identified in Title 49 Code of Federal Regulation Part 190 through 199. And those specific to natural gas are in Part 192. And those regulate how the pipeline operator must design, construct, operate, and maintain their pipeline to keep their pipeline facility safe and make sure that that product stays in the pipeline. Um, we've begun looking at the pipeline operator for their, their preliminary designs. However, at this, fact, at this juncture, um, their designs are preliminary, so nothing has been finalized. But if the pipeline operator uh, uh, obtains the necessary permits to move forward with construction, um, we will continue to inspect um, from construction through the design, operation, and maintenance of that pipeline. Um, and we want to, from a, the standpoint of emergency management, um, we do encourage all pipeline operators to ha maintain liaisons with emergency response officials to make sure that the emergency response officials have the information that they need to properly plan in advance of a pipeline emergency. We want to start, make sure that pipeline operators are communicating um, to make sure that they, they plan for an incident um, if one should happen and we have public awareness, um, regula regulatory requirements, as well as emergency response plan requirements. So we want to make sure that the operators are adhering to those regulatory requirements and again, providing the emergency response officials with the proper information so that they can prepare their plans in advance. Becky Howe was here, one of our town councilors. She is the councilor for the district that the uh, proposed facility would be in. <coughs> Thank you. Um, uh, 
Thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you all for being here. Um, I think Mayor Sullivan and Mayor Hedlund did a great job with an overview of the site. We've been sort of fighting this compressor station for nearly five years, and we've delved deep in, you know, the soil contamination there, the air pollution, um, and I know today you're really focused more on safety and security of the area. I know uh, Karen did mention the f uh, Code of Federal Regulations, and digging, digging deep into the permitting of these um, CFR um, 192, 163, like she mentioned, is all about the design and construction of compressor stations. And even though PIMSA says they don't have any oversight in siting compressor stations, um, a lot of what is proposed for North Weymouth goes against this particular code. Um, most specifically, I see as a problem is there needs to be two exits out of a compressor station, and you literally can't have one at this peninsula. It's a peninsula. If something happens, everyone who's in the public park there or an MWRA is trapped there. Um, and I think one of the things that really hit the nail on the head for me is when this was first proposed back in early 2014, I actually did a tour inside of the Oxford compressor station and did driving tours along the entire Algonquin route. And I'm not sure if anyone here has actually physically seen or been in a compressor station, but you really need to, to sort of see the gravity of the situation of current uh, compressor stations versus this proposal. When you go there, usually about 10 acres is completely fenced off with high security. We don't even have that here in North Weymouth. And then additionally, about 40 acres out or more is a secondary fence that is locked after hours and stuff. Um, the siting here is just ridiculous to you know, be blunt about it. And I just really urge PIMSA to look even more into depth into the siting of this. And if anyone else is you know, looking to make comments, I highly suggest looking at current compressor stations, Oxford, Connecticut, Chaplin, Connecticut, Burville, Rhode Island, and you will see firsthand why this is not the proper place for a compressor station. So thank you very much. Thank you, Councilor. Um, is there anyone here from Quincy? Oh, Allie. Hi. Allie, City for the Emergency Management. You have to please step up. Good morning, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Allie Sleeman, Quincy Emergency Management. I'm the director in Quincy. Uh, I think I can speak for uh, Mayor Koch. Um, you know, that City of Quincy, we, we, we echo uh, what Mayor Hedlund and Mayor, Mayor Sullivan of Range, we both said that you know, this is not the right place for a compressor station, and um, we stand in alliance with the rest of the South Shore. Thank you. Thank you, Allen. Uh, Braintree, may I spoke? Uh, Chief from Hingham, any comments from Hingham? <laughs> Very brief, that's fine. <laughs> this is all preliminary to get the ball rolling and playing. Good evening, uh, Chief. Uh, good afternoon, I'm sorry. Morning, whatever it is, sorry. Uh, <laughs> I hit them all there. Uh, I just want to be here. Uh, we're interested in participating, and um, I realize that uh, there'll be a lot of emergency planning and, and subjects, and we're just uh, we're committed to working with uh, your town and your public safety people to uh, make sure that we have proper plans in place. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, so ho hopefully we'll be reaching out to Hingham, Quincy, and Braintree to get a group together to work on plans that are contiguous and the same and, and you know, complete unified command setup. So thank you very much for being here. James, any comments you want to bring from <coughs> EMA's perspective? Good morning, James Mannion. I'm the regional manager for the Massachusetts Emergency Management Agency. Uh, I just want to ensure that everybody knows that we'll be here one way or the other, no matter really what happens. Uh, you know, we've been coming to this committee meeting as long as I've been the regional manager, we'll continue to come here. Uh, really, our role is to ensure that safety plans are in place for existing hazards. Um, you know, we don't really play any role in the approval process, but uh, I'd like to applaud this committee for, for existing. There's really not too many uh, emergency planning committees in the state that regularly meet like this and, and review, review plans and review hazards that have happened. Um, but, you know, John, I think the chairman has really sort of taken this LEPC to a whole other level and, and I think just the fact that this group is assembled here today for something as important as this to, to discuss so everybody can, you know, voice what their opinions are. Um, opinions are. It uh, really just kind of gives a, um, 
you know, uh, it just it just shows that how how important this this body of government really is. So, uh, thank you. Okay, thanks, James. Yeah. While you're there, James, uh, for planning purposes, as we start to move forward, um, are there avenues that we can look at for funding for drills, uh, possibly for equipment on a regional level to work with FIMSA and to work with uh, Enbridge to um, be prepared should we have to respond or something? Yeah, I mean, we have our, our, regular, our regular grants that we push out, our uh, EMPG grants. Uh, also with certified EPCs, you know, uh, local emergency planning committees or regional emergency planning committees. Um, we have grants that we push out that can, that can assist with planning. So, um, so definitely, yeah, there are grants out there available and will be available, you know, for, uh, for years to come, so. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. Anyone on the committee have any questions or comments for any of the people that are here? I just have one thing I just want to reiterate. Um, coming from an emergency response background, uh, I just want to reiterate the fact what something that Becky had said about uh, being on a peninsula. With that station being s situated where it is, it's going to tie up any access to the MWRA or also the uh, metering station, the gas metering station there. If we were to have an incident, what plans would require the MWRA to shut down or go into a lower capacity in the time of year? Um, and that's something we've got to think of, that it's, uh, it's just not dealing with that one incident. It's dealing with everything else that gets affected because of that one incident. So um, we also have the, uh, the, the bridge close by. And if that bridge gets closed <coughs> down, it's going to create a major, major uh, disruption of, um, of traffic, and it's going to make any kind of emergency response um, slow their response times down because of it. So once again, it's, it's one way in, one way out, um, and it's just, just not the right site for it. Thanks, John. Anyone else? Okay. Um, Jay, uh, Bob, anything on Beamer's end, or the mayor set it all for you? Okay. There's a couple of citizen groups here. Um, anything you want to say? The gentleman in the back, you're from Braintree, I believe. Mm -hmm. Brief to the point in public safety only. Yeah, yeah okay. Um, my name's Mike Lang. I'm the environmental uh, coordinator for the East Braintree Civic Association. I've been, um, I've been addressing environmental issues in the basin for 40 years now. Um, there, there's one aspect of this project that no one is looking at. As an accessory to the, um, the hub line metering station, the hub line is actually, the metering station is actually part of the project, and no one is looking at that. Now, I was an intervener on the bridge when the bridge was being built, and in the environmental assessment of the bridge, they state that there is no gas pipeline anywhere near the infrastructure of the bridge itself. If you were to go down to the bridge right now, you would see the yellow pipe sticking up right beside the supports for the bridge itself. Not only is that pipeline beside the bridge supports, there's also an oil pipeline that runs from Sprague over in Quincy over to the power plant. Now this is also the location of the future Access Northeast. If this pipeline is, is permitted, uh, then Access Northeast will be right behind and Access Northeast is even a larger pipeline. Now what I did, I, I contacted Pimpshire and Pimpshire uh, got back to me and said, well, this isn't a, um, this isn't a safety issue. It's a uh, siting issue. They said, contact FERC. So he called FERC. I talked to FERC. And FERC said, this isn't a siting issue. This is a safety issue. Contact Pimpshire. And so Pimpshire actually wrote back to me, gave me an email, actually. And they said, well, um, the problem is you shouldn't have placed your bridge Near the, uh, near the gas pipeline. They actually said that in writing. The bridge has been there over 100 years now. So um, I just wanted to bring that out, and I really feel that you folks uh, have to take a look at this. I contacted um, Secretary Pollack at the uh, DOT and um, asked for a meeting so that we could discuss this, and she refused to meet with us. I had, the, um, I had a senator and a representative actually ask for a meeting. I had Mayor Sullivan from my town ask for a meeting, and each time she refused to meet with us on this issue. So we got all these, and all these agencies refusing to look at the safety committee, or the safety issue, rather. You people have to take a look. I know the compressor is a major issue that's in the, in the papers and everywhere. 
you have to look at that metering station. Right now, the metering station has a gas vent, just like the blowdown that's going to be on the compressor, and it blows gas onto the bridge where the people, the commuters are. There's, they'll be sitting there waiting for the bridge to close, and if this thing blows off, now you've got a major problem. You also have a lot of dead people there. And thank you. I have this uh, report. I'd just like to give it to the, uh, the chairman, please. Thank you. Thank you. And Paul. Wow. Another member of the LEPC, our Harbor Master, Paul Malone. Um, <laughs> Come on up. Actually, you have a seat over there. You have a seat over um, here. Could you, after you sit, enlighten us on the shipping lanes and the impacts and negative impacts from an <coughs> incident of any magnitude at the compressor station? Okay, shipping lanes. As you well know, the Four River is a major area for ships, the large tankers of all kinds, uh, commercial, Boston Harbor cruise boats, a lot of passengers, one way in, one way out. My goal here is one thing that I've always been for is naturally safety. So if what's proposed is not safe, I really don't want it. But the bottom line is it should happen, and there's a, a, a fire, an eruption in that, in that area. There's only one way out. Parenting will be blocked off. Our side, one of the side, and Quincy side will be available to take people off from, from land. And that's the only, way, only access to get off that, that, piece, that peninsula. So that's what I'm looking at right now. The ship traffic, uh, naturally, if anything happens, the ships will be diverted away from the bridge. Not to come anywhere near it, but uh, it could cause a, a major problem with the shipping shipping lane because the, the, she ships these ships never stop; they go night and day, all year round. So I just don't want anything to happen again. I'm all about safety, no matter what I what I talk about. And if this is going to cause a safety problem, I'd rather not uh, see, it, see it transpire at all because it's not safe. Um, and that's the, that's, that's the main gist of things. And also the evacuation part, that, that bothers me. You only evacuate from the window side and Quincy side, Brentwood would probably be blocked up if there's, if there's, if there's a major fire. Um, and then we have to work, we work together with Quincy and, and Hull and, and Hingham to, to uh, get these people off, off the property that, that has, has been affected, and we'll go from there. But uh, just keep in mind, these are large ships, and they're carrying oil, diesel fuel, we also have a chemical plant in Quincy right there, the old P&G plant, don't forget that. And we also have a power plant. Bottom line is safety, safety, and don't forget safety. Thanks, Paul. Um, we have a couple of gentlemen from Calpine. Anything you gentlemen want to add or are you at this point good to go? Just to give yourself on your Frank Singleton Conservation Commission, this is a photograph of the bridge, the metering station, the pump station, and the proposed location. So just to show you how close everything is, uh, that sort of, uh, and you notice the clouds, there's a lot of thermal inversion. And the Michigan explosion six months ago was caused by basically uh, a thermal inversion. They vented the station because the computer detected something wrong. It flared uh, out. Frank, it Frank, can you please speak into a microphone, please? Sure. Thank you. So that's basically, uh, you haven't <laughs> seen it uh, before, been down there. This just shows you as an excellent photograph, including the bridge, just how close everything is. And right across the way, as you just mentioned, is actually the uh, Twin Rivers uh, plant. Uh, again, also Quincy's within the blast zone. And that actually is the elderly housing complex in uh, Germantown. And uh, it's also environmental justice community. So it, when uh, FERC got the application, they claimed it was rural from Spectra. And there was no uh, buildings or anywhere in there because they only took the delineation of the property and excluded everything that was adjacent. So according to FERC, review, there was no building, no bridge, um, and nothing nearby it was rural. So just wanted to show you that documentary. <laughs> Thanks, Frank. Sure. Yes, ma'am. Make sure you speak into the microphone. Yes, thank you. 
Thank you, Mr. Chair, for recognizing me and thank you for reconvening this discussion. I'm Alice Arena. I'm the Executive Director of the Four River Residents Against the Compressor Station. And I just wanted to point out a couple of little things. So the first thing is I have the utmost respect for our fire police, our emergency people. I know you do a fantastic job. But I need to tell you that training and equipment and all of those things will probably do you precious little good. What tends to happen with these explosions, it's happened recently in Kentucky. It happened about three years ago in a place called Salem Township, Pennsylvania, and it was the same pipeline company, it was Spectra. And then the explosion that happened in Armada Township in Michigan this past January that basically the only thing you can do is cordon off about a quarter mile radius and let it burn. The gas companies will tell you the same thing. They have to shut off the gas on both ends to you know, keep it from flowing anymore and burn off what is in the pipes. The heat is so intense that you cannot get within a quarter of a mile of this. And it takes out pretty much anything that is close by. So in terms of the bridge or in terms of the pumping station, where it might not do, you know, you might be able to make the argument that it won't do physical damage, what it will do is take out the computer systems for both of those operations. So in the case of the pumping station, raw sewage will be dumped into the bay, 60 million gallons a day. The bridge, it could affect the operations of the bridge going up and down. And in this case, with this, the shipping lanes uh, being so active, especially with Sitco, that Sitco plant supplies diesel fuel, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna be cold, uh, to a good chunk of New England. If that bridge cannot go up and down, those tankers cannot get it in out of the Sitco terminal, and therefore gasoline and diesel would not be able to be delivered. So there's your, your functional problems with that, forgetting any of what might happen to the people who are within that quarter of a mile. The second thing I want to mention, and I want to make sure that everyone is clear on this, um, Enbridge has already had, or Algonquin or Spectra, whatever they want to call themselves, um, within the past two, two and a half years, there have been multiple incidences of corrosion on the pipes that are already there. So the first incident was about two years ago. They had a problem. There's a machine called a pig that goes in through the pipes that cleans out the PCBs and junk in there. And about two years ago, that pig got stuck. So that meant there was a problem in the pipe. They had to do some digging. Conservation Commission was told because they had to dig in the wetlands um, to, to expose that pipe to find out what the problem was. I sadly do not know what the outcome of that was. The second thing is, is that they have corrosion there now. They have divers working in the area and they're digging up the pipelines now. They have to replace, potentially have to replace the pipe, but they also have to replace the electric anodes that help control the corrosion. So you've had these pipes, the I-9 coming from Pennsylvania, the I-10 going up to Canada. Those pipes have been in place for almost 20 years in a corrosive salt water and arsenic environment. And so those pipes are, you know, are going to be starting to show signs of wear. Spectra's plan, Algonquin's plan, is to up the pressure in those pipes. They've been running between 450 and 750 PSI for the past 20 years. They plan in their resource reports, they talk about ex expanding that and going, putting the full pressure uh, that they're allowed to do at 1440 PSI on pipes that have been sitting in a corrosive environment for 20 years. So your main problem might not exactly be the compressor station, but the backup heat and vibration from that compressor station, coupled with the corrosion on the pipes, is going to cause an explosion, and it's likely that explosion will be directly under the bridge. So just a couple things to be thinking about as you're going forward and thinking about adaptations and plans should this, be, this compressor station be forced on the citizens of Wayman. Thank you. Thank you very much. <coughs> Karen, any thoughts on USDOT funded regional training for us? 
that might be coming along, um, drills with um, Enbridge, or anything that you're aware of or that your, your entity can manage? FEMSA doesn't provide funding. However, there are some grant opportunities that FEMSA does offer. It's not specific um, to necessarily training or equipment, um, but I can provide you a link for the, the, the grants that FEMSA does offer, and they are publicly announced, and you can set up for alerts that on FEMSA's grants on grants.gov. Um, the pipeline operator um, sends out public awareness information. They're required to do so in compliance with their regulatory requirements. And specifically in the materials that Enbridge does send out, they um, talk about their safety community grant program. And I'd be happy um, to you know, make sure that that information is, is provided with you, but you maybe have also seen it, it was in their, their mailing to emergency responders that was provided in 2019. Thanks, Karen. Um, anyone have anything else from the committee? Okay. Yes, ma'am, Don. speak into the microphone and public safety oriented only. Yeah, uh, Margaret Bellafiore. I'm a board member of Four River Residents Against Compressor Station and also the representative for the public involvement program participants on the cleanup of the contamination. But uh, I know you probably know all about what happened uh, in Lawrence, North Andover and Andover, but I thought I would just uh, remind you, in case you didn't, that there is this wonderful podcast uh, called Fire in the Valley, and I have copies of how you can access it free. WGBH did it, and you hear all the responders. You hear you, your voices, but through the voices of people in Lawrence and North Andover, and, just, and it wasn't a compressor station, but it's similar in the fact that you had a, uh, a gas corporation, Columbia, that um, has such an arrogant view of public safety. Uh, I'd love to have the mayor of Lawrence, Dan Rivera, here today because uh, one of his comments on this podcast is when they finally got Columbia Gas uh, to respond to all the fires, uh, they said, evacuate the city but they gave them no help, and there was no plan. There was never a plan. So that's Thank all. You. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Yep. Again, to, uh, she made a, brought up a good point. We're here to begin the planning process so that should an event happen in Weymouth and the surrounding towns, we will have a plan. Um, one of the things I'd like to put together um, is a task force of uh, representatives from Weymouth, Braintree, Quincy, and, and uh, Hingham, um, as well as the Coast Guard uh, for, the, for the shipping lanes, so that we can put together a, a good unified command plan. Um, James from MEMA has already agreed to help us with that. Um, we'll probably drag FIMSA in at some point as well. Um, so even though we prefer that it doesn't exist at this point, um, the Weymouth LEPC has determined that it's time to start the planning process just in case. Um, and again, as, as Mayor Sullivan stated, this will be a four-town joint effort. Um, all four towns will be negatively impacted in some way, as will the, the shipping lane, um, as was pointed out by the harbor master. So it's prudent on us to begin the planning process. We're going to have to have a site-specific of um, emergency action plan that involves the four towns as well as mutual aid that comes in from other towns. A, a, a catastrophic at that plant would be worse than Lawrence. Um, the disruption would be worse. Um, the 39,000 cars a day that crossed a four over bridge alone um, disrupted and clogging all the streets through the landing and through Braintree would be a, a catastrophe in itself um, without the incident. Um, so there's a lot we need to look at, a lot we need to plan for. Um, and uh, we're going to keep this process moving forward. Um, so I will be in touch with um, each of the communities through their emergency management directors to um, get the contingent from those communities to work together in a, in a, in a subcommittee to get this pro project moving. 
Um, anyone else on the committee have anything else you'd like to add to this topic? Yes, sir. Just uh, one quick thing. Uh, in response to Karen, uh, you were talking about an emergency planning grants. Uh, this is the um, June 2019 bill. It's called Safer Pipelines Act of 2019. I haven't had a chance to look through it closely, but there is a section there, Pipeline Safety Information Grants to Communities. Thank you. We'll take a look at that. Thank you. Um, anyone have anything else to add on this topic before we move on? Okay. Next item is other business. Under other business, we have a training line item. Um, we were approached by Mass Maritime Academy um, to do another tabletop exercise this year. Originally, I was asked not to apply to give other towns the opportunity to apply. Um, because so many students are now taking uh, emergency management as an undergrad or graduate course of study, they've got an influx of students and not enough communities to run the, the uh, tabletop. So they asked us if we'd climb back on board, so I've agreed. Um, I'm going to be putting together a subcommittee to uh, work as the training subcommittee to work with the students. Uh, the tabletop will take place again during April vacation, uh, like it did last year. All their tabletops across the state will be in April. Um, but they're going to start putting this together as early as next week. Um, so I'll be call contacting those that are going to serve on the uh, subcommittee for the training. It will be a hazmat drill of some kind involving a school. Um, school departments already expressed an interest. Um, so we'll be working on that. Um, Anyone else have any other trading issues or any other issues that we need to bring up? Is the undersecretary here? Yes. Is the undersecretary here? Is the, under, <coughs> the undersecretary, somebody from the undersecretary's office here? Um, yes. You are here. Oh. Thanks. Any comments you'd like to make on his behalf? Okay, thanks. Um, anyone have anything else they need to bring before? Can I just bring up one little yes. thought that I, I drove by the um, location where the new library is, and um, I've been following it, and I wasn't aware that it was so large. And then it got me thinking, is that another site that could be used for EOC? Has any planning been thought about uh, using it for a backup EOC or whatever? Will you, now it's the time to do it while they're building it. I, that ca it's the, the library is a designated disaster field office, so it is being set up for that. So it could be used as any, an alternate EOC if necessary. Okay, it's not going to be designated as that, but it could be used. All right, um, so it'll be tied in with all the town, um, yes. with the yes. smart boards and everything else. Good. Okay, um, we're going to schedule our yes. Since it is September, it is uh, it is prepared this month. In the, in the country, so we have a lot of good uh, uh, materials on our website and on FEMA's website, but if everybody would just take, you know, 10 minutes of their day to think about what their emergency plan is, where they work, uh, at their house, you know, kids, family, how to meet up, stuff like that, this is really, a, you know, the time of year where we tell people to kind of be prepared. It also is hurricane season, so um, there are definitely still a lot of storms spitting out there. Uh, you know, some of the worst, war worst storms we've seen have been this time of year, so we're definitely uh, you know, not past um, you know, the risk of a hurricane. Hurricane Dorian, you know, could have come up here three weeks ago. We spent five or six days, basically that whole week of September, planning for it to, have to come here on Saturday. Thankfully, it kept on going south. Uh, but just, uh, it's just really important for everybody to, uh, you know, have a plan for their family and for themselves. Um, just uh, one other quick thing. Um, we're going to be doing a few training courses in this area. We have an ICS 300 course in Hanson. Uh, that's Incident Command System 300 uh, on October 22nd, 24th. Uh, we're just about to finalize an EOC operations course in Hingham uh, on November 4th. So uh, we're working with uh, Chief Murphy in Hingham, and I think he's going to be inviting neighboring communities. It's really just about uh, you know to train public safety officials and communities, um, you know what the what how you can use an EOC and sort of how MEMA operates and how a community EOC can interact with us just to make operations more efficient. Um, uh, and we have our emergency management performance grant that's due by the end of the week. John's going to submit that. Uh, we also have our pre-disaster mitigation plan um, grant and our flood mitigation assistance grant uh, that we need to know for, by communities uh, by October 11th if they're interested in applying. So, 
Thanks, James. That's that, no problem. Thank you, James. And please, with this evacuation plan, think of your elderly neighbors. Just check on them. Make sure they're, they're okay. Anything else? <laughs> Next meeting will be in oh. January at some, oh, Mayor. <laughs> Mayor Headland. <clears throat> I was gonna mention something uh, earlier, but I wasn't sure how today was gonna play out and exactly what your agenda was, but <clears throat> since it's been noted that we have someone from the Secretary of Public Safety's office here today, I think it's important we um, go back a little bit and remind folks, especially the representatives from the Secretary's office that, and I'm gonna be sketchy on my dates here, so you have to help me out, but previous meeting held by this committee where we had Secretary McMurray present, um, and that was for the purpose of gleaning information from all of you and all of us down here on the South Shore. After Governor Baker promised um, a uh, uh, safety analysis of the, of the, uh, of the project as, as it related to public safety and impacts to the bridge, et cetera, things like that. Uh, that came at the same time where uh, he ordered the um, impact assessment, health impact assessment, and um, subsequent to that, I know the secretary left. I believe that the staffer that was assigned the task of doing that work also left around the time of the secretary's departure. Again, I don't have the specific dates in front of me. And um, after that, uh, a meeting that was organized by Congressman Lynch, attended by myself, uh, Mayor Sullivan, <clears throat> and Mayor Koch, directly with the governor, uh, I had that opportunity to remind him that that study was not ever completed. And he ordered subsequent uh, staff from the Secretary's office, Secretary of Public Safety's office to pick up on that. Now, I don't know if this committee's heard anything as a result of that. I have not heard anything, but I would hope that if you guys have any information on that or any feedback or if you have been solicited for your input, for that particular study, I'd, I'd like to know that, and if not, I'd like to just send the message back to the staff that's here from the Secretary's office that that was a promise made to us here uh, by the governor, and uh, I know that there was some staff work being done on it, but we still, I believe, haven't seen anything. And if I'm wrong on that, please, please correct me. I know my office has seen nothing or heard nothing. I don't know. Fire, have you heard any? No. Anybody else in the, I don't believe any of us have So if it's appropriate for me through you to maybe solicit some input from the, from the representative of the, uh, of the secretary's office that's here, I'd like to maybe find out if anything is actually happening on that or if it's, it's underway, if it's been started, if it's been completed, that would be helpful. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Ma'am? I guess you're gonna get to speak. <laughs> If you could start with name for the record, this is live, by the way. Jennifer Riedel, Executive Office of Public Safety. I did hear the mayor's concerns. I will take them back to our secretary's office and to the undersecretary's office. We are aware of the um, back and forth comments and meetings that have happened with the governor's office. And we will be, I can respond in writing after I take the information back to the secretary. Thank you. It, the, the, one question the mayor did ask, last year we were promised a, a study that was gonna be redone. Do we know if that is even, did that go away with the other undersecretary and his staff or is that still being worked on? If not, can we resurrect it? Um, it was promised as the mayor mentioned. Correct, I will bring that back to the secretary's office. Um, in this, in this uh, capacity, we do have our MEMA office participating in that, and our undersecretaries have been available to meet with public safety representatives from Weymouth and the other towns. We have uh, completed those meetings and prepared um, to be at this meeting and to be involved in the public safety emergency operations plans going forward. So that's right now what our focus and attention is on. Thank you. Mayor, you all start with that, or any other follow-up while she's here? And we do have the same binder uh, that we have been for the undersecretary as well that includes new information and concerns for the town. So if I could give that to you as well. I'm sorry, did you say to take that 
back? Yes, please. Okay, Thank I'd you. be happy to do that. Thank you. All right, that's more up-to-date data than we had last year for, for the undersecretary to work on for a more valid report. Correct. Thank you. And two people from the audience that spoke did give me items to take back as well, and I will be taking them to the secretary. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else have questions for her before she steps down? Um, any further business to come before the LEPC before we entertain motions to adjourn? Uh, sure. Why not? Go ahead. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Mulvihill. Um, I would give to the mayor and thank the mayor for bringing up the safety report that was promised and the dates that I can give you is that the governor had promised the safety report in July of 2017. Under Secretary McMurray was here on October 2nd, I believe, of 2018. So we've waited two full years and if you have no safety report and the mayor has no safety report and we have no safety report, um, I guess there isn't one. And then the second thing I would like to bring up is in the public involvement plan that Ms. Bellafiore was talking about, within that plan, Algonquin has stated that they will begin construction on November 1st. We don't really know what that means. We're pushing back on different departments and trying to get more information. But I think that everyone, we have kind of tried to spread the word, but we want to make sure that the public knows and that you know that they are planning to go ahead. They still do not have the wetlands permit, waterways permit, or coastal zone management sign off. Okay. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, we're going to, we'll, the, the, the LEPC at this point will we'll keep the undersecretary's office under pressure till we get what we're looking for. Um, she doesn't know us very well. Yes. One other uh, promise that was made to the mayor, Frank Singleton, uh, Weymouth Conservation Commission, was a vulnerability study. Are supposed to be looking at that site from the point of view of uh, uh, hurricanes. It's a designated uh, evacuation zone and the like. So there are two studies that were promised and not delivered. One was the safety. The other one is the study on whether or not by, uh, I believe it was going to be coastal zone management, uh, whether or not the site was suitable given the fact that it's designated as something that's going underwater in a few decades and already the metering station is subject to flooding. So there's is two it, studies. Has, has anything made it to the Conservation Commission thus far? Uh, they basically had a superseding order of conditions and we voted against it uh, by the state uh, overruling us and we have not been, uh, we've been uh, notified but we've not been involved legally. I'm not sure where Mr. Callahan is on the recent construction that's going on down there where they're actually uprooting vegetation and uh, digging right now. And a second issue that came to our attention is that the um, Calpine or uh, never identified that there was a uh, oil line that fills that two million gallon oil tank that's their backup fuel supply. It's now marked down there and it's right adjacent to the uh, gas lines. So you could have a significant problem with the oil tank as well as with uh, a gas explosion. But we have not had any uh, communication from Calpine. Right, thanks. Any other business to come before this committee before we entertain a motion to adjourn? And I'll entertain motions. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Any opposition? We're adjourned. Thank you very much.